Both the talks um, come from our phase one study of BGB3111. Um, this drug is a second generation BDK inhibitor. It's similar to ibrutinib in that it binds the same active sites and it binds the sites irreversibly. It's different from ibrutinib in that it is more specific and selective for BTK, which allowed us to push the dose up to a much higher dose. So the BTK inhibition that we're achieving is at drug doses equivalent to about eight to 10 times that of ibrutinib at the current clinical doses. Now the phase one study eva evaluated a whole bunch of different histologies. So we isolated those patients with CLL and Waldenstrom's macroglobinemia and those two um, talks in the two, those two types of diseases have been accepted as oral presentations here at ASH. Um, perhaps I should talk about CLL first. So there were approximately 46 patients who were evaluable for the CLL cohort. These are patients who have been treated for more than 120 days. Essentially, the drug is very well tolerated. There is the bruising and petechia that one expects with this class of drugs. Um, there was a very low incidence of atrial fibrillation. Um, we demonstrated in these patients that we biopsied the, the lymph nodes, and we demonstrated complete tissue inhibition of BTK, which is sustained in the lymph nodes. The response rate in the CLL cohort is 96%. There are no complete remissions to date, with an early follow-up around nine months, but the follow-up is median of nine months, but up to 21 months, and there's been no relapses so far in this cohort of patients. So, so far in CLL, we've demonstrated that the drug is active. Um, the responses are durable in the short to medium term, and the side effect profiles are quite favorable. Moving on to Waldenstrom's, a different disease, we have uh, treated, there were 33 evaluable patients with su sufficient follow-up. These patients were treated with the same drug, the same dosage. Once again, they had very deep BTK inhibition. Uh, you know, there was an incidence of bruising and bleeding that was expected for this class of drugs. The response rates in modern drums, including minor response, was 94%. But what stood out to us was that there was a very good partial re uh, response rate of 34%. And this is a response rate where there's a 90% reduction in paraprotein. And from the other BTK inhibitor studies, this rate is only expected to be around 15%. And if you think about I said, we're saying that the BTK inhibition that we're achieving is much higher than that of the current doses of other drugs used. Um, it suggests to us that maybe there is further gains to be made by deepening the current uh, level of BTK inhibition in the clinic. So we're continuing to explore this drug, um, trying to see what happens, what the best responses that we can get with BTK inhibition is when we push the doses right up.